Fly fishing is kind of an art form. You are mimicking bug life and the entomology in the river through hand-tied flies and different techniques to try and basically trick a fish into thinking that something that looks an awful lot like their food source is their food source. Well, the history of fly fishing in basalt really centers around the frying pan river post-construction of Rudai Dam. So the frying pan now has a dam and a reservoir known as Rudai Reservoir that was completed in the 60s. The 70s and 80s, the fishing started to become more popular on the frying pan below the dam or what's known as the tailwater fishery. The salt really earned a reputation as an international fly fishing destination, largely due to the frying pan, but also due to the Roaring Fork River, which is behind me here. People are like measurably happier on average when they live by a body of water. So the fact that this community here is here at all is, is because of the convergence of like the Roaring Fork and the Frying Pan Rivers right here in town. We joke that we're the capital of, of fly fishing here. Well, the river uh, impacts the community greatly due to the fact the amount of money that's brought in to the state of Colorado from the fishing and slash hunting industry. The uh, amount of money that's brought into the state, it, uh, it outweighs what the skiing industry brings into the state so it helps us out financially. We have done several economic studies and fishing generates almost four million dollars to basalt just on the lower frying pan and root eye reservoir. Without that aspect of it we we just wouldn't really have that much of a tourist economy not in the sense that like Aspen has skiing and Carbondale is biking we have fishing. We have the only town in North America where two gold medal trout streams come together and any one of us could walk from our home or our place of work and go out and fish a gold medal trout stream. That's a big deal. That's even cooler than a ski in, ski out condo. The fact that you can bail out and hit a gold medal trout stream at any time. Well, I like the Frying Pan River due to the fact that it's a year round fishery. It's a dam, There's a it's a tailwater fishery that comes from a dam so the water temp stays consistent throughout the year even in the winter time it's fishable where other rivers around freeze up the frying pan is usually always available to fisher people we're going to go out on the frying pan river probably um, one of the more well-known rivers in the west um, great dry fly fishing river it's great nymphing i mean just four trout rainbow brown trout um, and we're going to go out do a little lesson today kind of get the feel for how to cast and um, how to catch a trout. It's a lot different, more different than uh, conventional fishing, so um, kind of just getting the feel and learning how to cast and yeah. reel in and manage all your line and the flies and yeah, have a good day out on the water. So, If you were to go down in the water and fill all the way up to the top, it traps a little bit of air, so you're a little more buoyant. <laughs> we're not doing anything crazy. I mean, that always scares yeah. people. It's like, what are we getting ourselves into? It's not that crazy. <laughs> this is part of it. Um, you're going to catch the bushes, you're going to tangle, you're going to do all these sort of things. Um, that's, uh, you learn patience doing this. Some days it's frustrating. We've got a tiny little fly. That's one. <laughs> Super small. Like, it's crazy that you yeah. can catch fish on that. But, yeah, that's the hook. It's wild. And then we have a strike indicator. It's a bobber. Why fishing has to be big. And yeah, we're literally just drifting these through the water. That's really um, kind of the theory behind everything. I'm a firm believer in the best way to learn to fly fish is to fly fish. Yep. We're a full service fly shop, so you can come in, grab a shirt. We got flies, ton of stuff, but um, definitely one of the big things we do is the guided fly fishing trips. I make it look easy yes. waiting around. I do it a lot. Yep. I still have gone down, gotten wet. Biggest thing, take it slow, we're not in a rush. We also offer the float trip, which is a, a pretty fun way to do it as well. So there, instead of standing in the water, you are you have a guide who's rowing you down the river, that sort of thing, and uh, you're catching fish on the move. So it's, uh, it's a good way to spend a day. It's obviously, I'm a little biased, but, uh, but being on the water is great, catching some fish and getting the full Colorado experience is uh, yeah, a great spot to do it. So I'm gonna hand that to you, and I'm actually gonna add a little bit of weight, just because they bump the flows a little bit. These fish are sitting on the bottom of the river, so if you don't get it down to them, they're not going to eat. Not, yeah. Exactly. It has caused me to be a calm, relaxed individual, where I used to be very stressed out. Fly fishing has changed my personality completely. 
made me a better person. And it can do it for everyone. When I take people fishing on the river, I take them out and I don't really try to catch them fish. I try to get them to calm down and really respect and enjoy nature and, and see nature because we're really on the river because I guess one of the main reasons we fish trout is because we like where they live in a pristine, clean environment. And so when I'm guiding, that's what I try to teach more so than catching fish. I am obsessed with fishing. I have been obsessed with fishing ever since I was a kid. I caught my very first stream caught fish on a fly rod here in the Roaring Fork Valley outside of Carbondale when I was 13. I mean, anybody could be an angler. I don't think there's any stipulations. The beauty of fly fishing is anybody can do it. I took a client out uh, maybe a couple weeks ago. He was 87, so still getting around. Sometimes we'll put, we'll bring a chair for him and you can sit down and so, I mean, all ages. But it's not just about fishing, um, it's about what the river means to everyone and taking care of it. Being a good environmental steward is also sort of being a good river steward, recycling, picking up trash while you're out here, taking care of the water. You have to understand the ecosystem that exists on the river in order to succeed. So what happens is as you um, move sand around, and so you can kind of like map the ground and see where like water would be if if you had put water on this land or something like that. We use it to like demonstrate watersheds and how they work. Made great strides with the Bureau of Reclamation and trying to regulate flows to enhance fish habitat and make sure that we maintain the highest distinction possible for the quality of the trout fishery. We're at a very interesting time in uh, the history of basalt. We're really uh, rapidly transitioning into a self-sustaining permanent community. There'll be always lots of interdependence with Aspen, with our neighbors up valley and down valley, but I think it's just become a really attractive place to live. And development's going to happen, but it, it comes, any type of change comes with an impact. And Aspen is, is where, I mean, you see 100 private jets parked there on a daily basis, right, flying in and out. You're introducing people that do not have roots here or understand, especially nature. We have a lot of accidents, people getting lost in the forest or whatever is going on. That's really changing the, the, the culture here. This is the Salt River Park. The, the river, as you can see, we basically acquired this land and developed this land to provide a visual access and immediate physical access to the river. This site we're standing on was a community of 38 trailers at one time, and we had, you know, significant environmental issues, both you know, impacting water quality. So this, and along with a whole series of strategic conservation easements that have been acquired over the years. This is new. I mean, this is like a month that this has been going on, and it's really been drawing a huge crowd. We're finding out that we're attracting events that we hadn't even visualized. We knew it was going to be a great functional open space for the town. Definitely a lot of change happening and a lot of decisions happening and, and a lot of different sides. So, uh, but I'll say uh, at least they kept some of the park and didn't sell it all off. Thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> some of the easiest things to help the river and, and allow it to continue to thrive are things that you can do at home. Most of the water that we use here comes from the river, whether it's in home and we're drinking it or showering with it and also watering our lawns. Basalt, getting a facelift, I don't think is a bad thing. I mean, I make my living and a lot of people in the valley make their living on people coming here to experience fishing, rafting, whatever it may be. So, you know, who am I to say like, I, we want people to come. If people stop coming, I don't have a job. But there is this balance of how do we protect our fishery, um, not overfish it, especially commercially. And how do we balance that? You know, this still feels like a Colorado mountain town there's a reason people want to come out here. If you live in this community and you care about the river, come learn more from us. Um, I think people are eager to learn, but people don't necessarily understand everything about the river or um, everything that is entailed in kind of moving into this community and moving into this different type of climate. And I would say the same for wherever viewers might see this or folks might live, understand and get involved with a similar organization at home, learn more about your local river, get out there, learn to explore it. When you explore it, you come to value it and then you fall in love with it and protect it. 
and the mission of Roaring Fork Conservancy is inspiring people to explore value and protect the Roaring Fork watershed. We get like a close-up We do got the sweet hat. Yeah, like, oh, really I was like, which one am I wearing today? I'm wearing yeah, the fish one. So I, I, my guilty pleasure is hats. Yeah. Cool. That's nice. It's a focus.